Hi, I'm Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Today we're going to use our CNC system to make this nice little tray. Stick around, hope you enjoy. I started out by designing the bowl in VCAR Pro. I drew a 6 inch by 6 inch square with a radius in the corners and then offset another line half an inch towards the outside. I set a pocketing profile on the inside square and an outside profile on the outside square. I used a combination of double sided tape and clamps to hold down the walnut blank. I used a piece of MDF to set the blank parallel with the x-axis, then applied clamping pressure with the four hold downs. I moved the spindle to the center of my workpiece, zeroed out the x and y axis, and then used the touch plate to zero out the z axis. I loaded the program in the CNC Shark control panel. Press start and let the CNC do all the work. Please note that I have the dust boot removed for video purposes. A router is an extremely dusty machine and all possible dust collection attempts should be made to prevent breathing in the dust. Not to mention keeping your workspace clean for safety. It is important to note that I set the machine to ramp in when it plunges the bit. This is not only for safety but is easier on the machine. If the machine bites off too much material it could cause the machine to miss a step. Proper speeds and feed should be followed for any bit. CNC's are great for multitasking. In my situation, I have to monitor the process to get the proper documentation for my videos. If I was not capturing videos, I would certainly be working on other projects in the shop. I should mention you should never fully leave your machine unattended. Here is a great view that shows how messy these machines can be. I fully recommend the dust boot accessories. I have made a few more trays after this video was processed and edited, and being I was not taking videos, I could implement the dust boot. With a solid vacuum, almost all of the chips and dust are collected. With the pocket operation complete, I switched the bit to a quarter inch down spiral end mill. I again use the Z0 touch plate to reset the Z axis. I again used a ramping technique when plunging the bit. I only set the outside profile to cut half of the depth of the blank. I used the bandsaw to remove most of the waste and then I used a flush trim bit at the router table to flush up the rest of the material. I installed a half inch shank flush trim bit in my router table and used slow methodical passes to remove the material and make it flush to the CNC portions. 
Using a starting pin is a must. I pivot the workpiece off this pin to avoid catching the router bit and being pulled into the blade or thrown out of my hands. I then use the roundover bit to give the tray a nice soft look and feel. I sanded the entire project with a few sanding sponges. I should mention that the bowl bit leaves grooves in the bottom of the tray. You could use a flat bit to clean these up, but I elected to leave them as I thought they looked cool. Now that the tray is all sanded up, we can think about finish. Now I'm going to use it for a food application, so I need a food safe finish. I'm going to use regular mineral oil for this. Let's go ahead and get it applied. I applied the mineral oil with a regular paper towel. The wood is thirsty, so plan on applying a few coats and wiping off the excess. When it came to the inside, I elected just to pour a bit in there and rub it around. I hope this video has shown how versatile a CNC system can be. Head over to your local Rockler or visit rockler.com to get more information on your CNC Shark HD3 with extended bed by Next Wave Automation. If you'd like to know more information on glass impressions, I encourage you to visit my website, andyglassimpressions.com, or search me on YouTube, Glass Impressions, as I release one woodworking how-to video each week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.